On this channel, we've witnessed some pretty incredible things over the years. Never before captured on film, and some undocumented by science. We've seen baby cockroaches being born from their mother as she was being devoured by fire ants. We've seen yellow crazy ants ingeniously feeding carnivorous pitcher plants with leftover insect parts to render them safe. And even watched Dracula ants mangling their own pupae to suck their blood. Well guys, today is another one of those days. For what I'm about to show you in this video is likely something you've never seen before. It's been a crazy week in the Antiverse. Our ant room jam-packed with ant kingdoms due to an event that shook nearly every single ant, creature, and vivarium in this biological plane of existence. The death of a goddess. But what's more crazy is that the way this all ended caught me by surprise and completely blew my mind. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Enjoy. Alrighty, C family. So let me start by how this all happened. As you may or may not know, I have a kluge bird eater tarantula who lives in a terrarium in a quiet corner of my room. Her name is Amelda, and you may have seen her featured in past videos. Well, this week, I made a heartbreaking and shocking discovery when I came to feed her. Imelda, the goddess of the Antiverse, had passed away. I couldn't believe it. This was the first time in my life to ever experience the death of a long-term tarantula friend. I called her the goddess of the antiverse because before any of these ant colonies came to be in this ant room, Imelda was living here, quiet and problem-free. She has seen this ant room change and evolve over the years, witnessing the constant evolution of ant kingdoms from her silken palace in the corner. I always saw her as the silent watcher and partner since the genesis of my ant room. But now Imelda had left me, and I felt so sad. She was definitely old. I bought her as an adult, something they say in tarantula keeping not to do, because you never know how old they actually are. But I know, in the almost five years she was with me, I did my very best to give her the fattest of roaches and the best life I could possibly provide. It was time to give her body a proper burial. Now, although it may seem a bit morbid if you're new here, it isn't to me. And if you're AC family, you'll understand that we wouldn't have it any other way. This is the Selva de Fuego, paludarium home to our largest and oldest ant colony in the Antiverse, the Fire Nation, our massive colony of fire ants. And so, my plan to immortalize her prominence in the Antiverse was to offer her dead body to the Fire Nation to proceed to transition her into the soil. But I know what you guys are thinking. Ants Canada, your title was clickbait. The tarantula's dead, so it can't fight back. But hold on now. Guys, remember what I said about something you've never seen before? Well, what actually ended up happening will shock you. The death of the goddess of the Antiverse physically affected everyone including me. You'll see what I mean by the end of this video. So, I placed her into the Selva de Fuego for the fire ants to feast on to begin the deconstruction. In the first three minutes, word quickly spread to the rest of the colony that something big, something massive, had just made its way into the Selva de Fuego. Ants rushed in from all around the tarantula carcass. These girls have never received a food item this large in their entire lives, and they all rejoiced at the unexpected find. This footage, by the way, is not time-lapsed. The ants have truly kicked up into turbo mode, as one would expect if an exceptional feast just suddenly fell from the skies. What I really wanted to see is how they would end up processing such a huge food item, and what their strategy was for taking apart this huge bird-eater tarantula which has a bit more of a complicated exoskeleton and anatomy than the regular roaches they're used to eating. Whatever the case, I was looking forward to witnessing something new. In 
In about five minutes, the Fire Nation was arriving at the site in droves, excited to get to work at bringing home the meat. What's fascinating is that ants communicate exclusively through pheromones, biochemicals which form an ant language that is released into the area so that all members of the colony are in sync. This tarantula and the entire area surrounding it is probably now covered with the let's eat this big mama pheromone. It's caused the ants to start the great dismantling process. It looks like the ants have now chosen to attempt to get to the tasty insides of the tarantula by way of the soft membranes and joints attaching its harder exoskeletal pieces and appendages together. But the Fire Nation will need all the help they can get to fully consume this tarantula. And quite frankly, this is kind of a big deal because if this were to happen in the wild, this huge tarantula could mean thousands if not millions of babies, the queen, and adult ants are fed and nourished. A huge tarantula like this could feed a nice-sized colony for a week. Food discoveries could mean life or death for a colony like the Fire Nation. So the sooner they could get all the meat down into the nest and or in their little ant bellies, the better. Five hours later, I returned to the Fire Nation to see how they'd come along. All I could see were a ton of ants just carpeting the area. I noticed the ants had decided to concentrate their efforts at cutting away at the exposed membranes of the joints and areas attaching the tarantula's head, i.e. cephalothorax, to the abdomen. Take a look at them hard at work, trying to bore their way into the interior of this leg. I love that with this 4K camera, we can see up close how they're maneuvering themselves around the hairs, which seemed to put up quite the challenge for the ants. I thought it was a good tactic to try to get in through this point, as entrance into here meant they could mine their way into both the cephalothorax and the abdomen, as well as all the legs. Okay, now AC family, wanna see something cool? Check this out. Speaking of abdomen, see these two finger-like appendages at the end of the abdomen? These are the spinnerets, the silk-producing appendages. But look, it looks like it is still producing silk, even if the tarantula was dead. I watched as ants dangled several times from invisible silk fibers produced from these spinnerets. Isn't that amazing that even after death, these spinnerets are still functional and able to create silk? I wondered what other unforeseen hazards this dead tarantula would pose for these fire ants. The next morning, I came to check up on the progress. Had they finished the tarantula overnight? Let's find out. Hmm. All right, still working on the tarantula, but what were the advancements? Look, they've successfully removed those problematic spinnerets, and it looks like the ants had created a pile of discarded useless parts, mostly dried up exoskeleton bits and hair. And hey, looks like they've managed to make their way into the tarantula's interior at these sections where the top carapace meets the cocci of the legs. And look at those chunks of tarantula meat the ants are carrying in their mandibles. Wow, looks like we can conclude that tarantula is white meat. Like miners carrying out massive nuggets of gold, the ants made their way off the tarantula and back into the nest. Now there was one thing quite peculiar that I did notice. Tell me if you guys notice it too. Have a look. Did you guys notice that a lot of the ants seemed to be clumsy and lose their balance? They were falling all over the place. It was peculiar because these ants are usually pretty nimble. Could the tarantula's flesh somehow be poisoning the fire ants or making them drunk? I had no idea the answer would soon come to us and completely blow my mind. But before we get to the end result of this dead tarantula dismantlement, I've got to show you guys how the death of this goddess has brought about a major shift within the Antiverse. Are you ready for this, AC family? So, now that the goddess Imelda had passed away and her silken palace removed, you may be wondering where the plateaus of Gaia 
home to our trap jaw ant colony called the Jawbreakers, which laid atop Imelda's palace, was placed. Well, you may be surprised to know that the plateaus of Gaia have now shifted to the east. I think the Jawbreakers will appreciate this new location, which was a bit brighter and more openly airy than the darkened corner they were previously occupying. Much more suited to their booming population, I would say. And what about the Scarab Beetle Larvae's Chambers of Sudan, which used to be situated behind the Plateaus of Gaia? Well, it may surprise you that they are now located here, along with our new Carpenter Ant Colony, Free Roaming Ants, and Termite Farm. I was happy to be able to use this previously unoccupied deep pocket of Antiverse space, which I also feel these ants, termites, and beetle larvae will like. As for Olympus, our huge super colony of marauder ants, we call the Titans, and the Blood Towers, the layer of our new Dracula ants called the Blood Legion that used to be in this corner, they are now here, occupying this corner, filling in the void that Imelda, the Jawbreakers, and the Scarab Beetles left. I personally like them better here. But wait, now you may be asking, if that's the new location for the Plateaus of Gaia, what happened to Eldragon Island, our dragon-themed paludarium and home to the Platinum Dragons, our lesser weaver ants living in the plants? Well, after several months of living on Eldragon, I've been noticing that their population has neither increased nor decreased. They still ate well, and I did see them entering and exiting their leaf nest. But overall, they weren't doing as well as I'd hoped in Eldragon Island setup. I wasn't sure if it was the moat water quality possibly hindering them from flourishing, or if it was too humid maybe. Either way, they weren't doing so well on Eldragon Island. So I figured it was time for a change. I moved the Platinum Dragons from Eldragon Island to the Eldragon Towers. Three stacked AC Outworlds, which is a bit smaller of a space for the Platinum Dragons, but much more suitable for their colony size, since it is easier to keep environmental conditions more consistent and controlled. But check out my plan. I've attached their test tube setups at the back, placing their leaf nests close by, so they can hopefully move into these test tube setups, where I can better monitor the colony and their growth. The entire system is closed, so there is no way feral ants can get in to threaten them which they've been known to do in the past. And speaking of which, what happened to the inhabitants of the River of Dragons' Tears? The Raspora fish, which were supposed to protect the Platinum Dragons from feral ants trying to swim across to get to the Platinum Dragons. And the Leviathans, our colony of cleaner shrimp, now that there was no more River of Dragons' Tears. Well, AC family, they've been deployed to the Golden Springs of our Golden Empire. Our yellow crazy ants in the Hacienda del Dorado. I much preferred them in these waters. The Raspora fish schooled and enjoyed this more shadowy water environment, which better matched their natural habitat. I also added more java moss to make the Golden Springs a bit more shadowy. The Leviathans hadn't waited a second to begin cleaning up the waters of all the gunk buildup. Look at that patch of clean surface they've already achieved. Whether this new team will prove effective at keeping these waters clean and eating dead yellow crazy ants, we'll have to see. I actually added a few more shrimp into the mix to get the cleaning team going and breeding. But overall, our former River of Dragons Tears inhabitants seemed happier in these waters, switching their citizenship as new Hacienda del Dorados. The great thing about this entire antiversal shift was that this new look and aesthetic flow of energy in the Antiverse felt much better now. Have a look. Doesn't the Ant Room feel less chaotic? Somehow, a new balance was established in the Antiverse, and I was grateful for the new geographic arrangement of Ant Kingdoms. I felt good looking at the Ant Room one last time before calling it a night. Lights off. It was day three, and in the morning I came to check up on the ants and what was left of the tarantula. But I wasn't prepared to see what I was about to discover. AC family, look at this. As expected, it seemed the ants had successfully hollowed out most of the meat. The tarantula looked hollow now. They had finished collecting what they needed from the tarantula. But later that day, check out what else I saw.
Do you see it? There, that ball of ants. How peculiar. I had never seen anything like it. I tried to look as closely as I could to try to figure out what was going on. Was the queen there and the ants surrounding her? That's the only time I'd ever seen them balling up like this. How odd. Now the crazy thing about this all, AC family, was that these ants balled up like this for hours and hours that day until I came to find them all dead. What on earth? What could have possibly caused this ball of death on the tarantula? And then I noticed something. The ants crawling around the legs that seemed to be having a hard time slipping and falling all over the place. And that was when it finally hit me. <gasps> the tarantula hair. OMG, the ants weren't drunk. The various hairs of the tarantula were probably making it hard for the ants to gain a proper grip onto the tarantula's surface, which probably meant the orientation of the hairs at the abdomen had somehow trapped this unfortunate ball of ants in that one spot. The ball was actually sitting in a bald patch of the tarantula's abdomen, which told me the ants were probably grasping desperately to leave this death region of the tarantula and the defensive urticating hairs, which are naturally designed to dislodge in defense, were trapping the ants in this death pit of tarantula hair. Looking back at the footage, it did seem like the ants were rolling what looked like a ball of tiny hairs around inside their death ball. The ants couldn't get out and died of exhaustion. Wow! The tarantula goddess Imelda of the Antiverse had not left us without truly leaving her mark and taking some ants with her. She also left the Antiverse with a new layout, a better layout. And you know what? She also didn't leave without giving me a gift to remember. Cleaning up and removing her terrarium caused invisible airborne urticating hair to fill my entire condo, causing my housekeeper and I to feel itchy all over our bodies, as well as these unsightly, irritated, and itchy, pus-filled rashes. Imelda left this plane of existence like a true goddess. As I watched the fire ants in the closing stages of cleaning Imelda's body up, I couldn't help but think how amazingly interconnected the existence of a creature could be to that of all others around. I felt this entire situation reminded me, even metaphorically, how every creature, plant, and habitat is deeply connected, including us humans, who at times may fall under the illusion that we are unaffected by changes with said creatures, plants, and habitats. When an animal dies, we are all affected, and we all shift. When life is preserved, we are all affected, and we all shift. Thank you, Imelda, for sharing this final lesson. I will truly miss you. Oh yeah, and one more thing. I almost forgot. Speaking of preservation of life, some of you might be wondering what happened to a certain white aqua dragon, our most recent addition to the Antiverse, who was placed into the Golden Springs last week to help with eating dead ants. If the Levithians and Rasbora fish are living there now, where is the white aqua dragon? Well, last week, I, as well as many of you, felt our newcomer needed a bigger space to live, one that was colder and more interesting for the dragon. Well, AC family, in a parallel universe, an unexplored, underworldly abyss, much more frigid, inhabited by the likes of giant griffins and water worlds teeming with life, sprung my newest grand creation. AC family, behold, welcome to Axolotl Land into which someone special is about to move in. Alright EC family, what do you think? 
Weren't you mind blown by how deadly Imelda was to consume? Do you like the new layout of the ant room she left us with? And are you ready to see the world our cute axolotl is living in now? I show you all next week. So hit that subscribe button and bell icon now so you can keep updated on the happenings of the Antiverse and Aqua Dragons of Axolotl Land. Yes, Aqua Dragons plural. And hit the like button every single time, including now. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC and her colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would just like to watch extended play footage of the fire ants feasting on the tarantula. I will surely miss her, but I'm happy she's now crossed the Rainbow Bridge. And before we proceed to the AC question of the week, I'd like to plug my daily vlogging channel, daily vlogs of my journey as a YouTuber with creatures like my baby African Grey Parrot. If you love birds and animals, I'd love for you to meet my new cute little bird. Hope you can subscribe when you're there. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what neat special ability does the axolotl possess? Congratulations to Safwan and Sabrina, who correctly answered, the axolotl possesses the power to regenerate its body parts. Congratulations, Safwan and Sabrina. You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what is the technical term for the tarantula's head section of its body? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.